fam, we freed up a few gigabytes on my phone's hard drive. We should be good to go to finish up this project. While you were uploading onto my computer, I went ahead and finished the last corner right here and used the last of my washers and screws, just distributed evenly around the project to reinforce it a little bit more. I kept it all symmetrical because I'm OCD like that. So now that we have all of our screws and all of our glue all set up and beautiful it is time to start assembling the foam and to do that we need about 96 pieces of two-sided adhesive velcro tape so we need a pair of scissors another tool and we are going to cut out a whole bunch of squares Okay, that is half of the Velcro squares that we need. We got just over 100 with 24 pieces of sound foam, four pieces per, pe per piece of sound foam. We're going to need 96 squares of each type of Velcro, each half of the whole. Romantic, isn't it? And we get just about 100 of one of these, cutting them slightly larger than to square. So let's start on the other half. Black and purple, black and purple, no. All right, we have cut out all of our little Velcro squares. We are ready to start mounting the whole purpose, the sound foam. <sighs> this has been a much longer process than I expected and I'm sure this step will take much longer than I expect too. But I like the idea of using these Velcro strips rather than gluing the sound foam on there because if anything ever happens to this board that I have assembled, if it turns out to last less long than these, I will be able to remove these and reuse them as two sets of these black and purple sound foams cost about $45. I don't want to waste that kind of money. So to Velcroing. I also forgot to mention on the back side, I did not account for rotation when securing the opposite corners. Uh, I'm really bad at this. It's very hard to point at the things you mean to whilst recording. So basically we have a symmetrical thing, whereas I wanted it to be thicker wood on the bottom and the thinner wood on the top. We instead have one thick on each side and one thin on each side. So now it does not matter which side is the top because it is symmetrical. Oops. Well, that's how we learn. So I can start at either end and start securing this sound foam. Here you can see the rough pattern starting to assemble. I decided to go with this end because I did manage to punch one little hole through my cardboard with my drill bit. So this shall effectively cover up that one singular mistake. As for the others, I'm out of luck. So I can't imagine there's a particularly wrong way to do this. What I am doing is sticking one piece outwards in the corner, pretty close to it, just so that I don't not line them up. This will be an easy way to do it. Then I stick the other side directly on, and then I will place it down onto the cardboard once all four corners are placed.
We have one row assembled and gosh darn is this project coming along. That looks so good. I'm gonna go grab some water, BRB fam. Half done. Half done. We're almost there. We fucking did it. Hang on. Took about four hours start to finish, including the bonus trip to Home Depot. Um, as for the materials, I think we 
put about $150 into this. We spent about $45 on the acoustic panels, two packs of 12. We spent about $30 on lumber, so that's $75, um, five bucks on glue, $80, and $30 on the cardboard foam backer, which is about $110, plus shipping and handling, adhesive strips. We're actually about $125 went into this, give or take, and it already looks fucking great. Look at how cool this is. This is gonna improve the acoustics on my live streaming and on my videos, and it just looks fantastic. We can also add lights on the side to bring in sort of a nice halo glow effect on the acoustic panels, but that is a DIY project for another day. As for the panels themselves, I wanted to point out that I like the adhesive strips more than just gluing them to the cardboard for a number of reasons. Uh, first of all, and overall, they're removable. Now this is gonna help you if you ever like damage one, spill something on one, you can take it off to clean it. If let's say you get it all put together and you're watching replays of videos and live streams and you realize, oh, some of these acoustic panels are slightly out of place, uh, there might be gaps or something, you can remove them and you have a good inch or a good half inch of play up and down, left and right to adjust your panels so you can always pull them off, adjust them like that. Again, if something happens to the board, you can remove all the panels, salvage them and then reapply them to a new board that you built. Oh, that looks fan-fucking-tastic. I'm really curious to see how just this is affecting the sound. I know the sound quality probably wasn't very good. I recorded this whole thing on my cell phone and I am outside on the deck. So I do apologize for poor sound quality in this video. And uh, yeah, this was the first time I've ever done something like this. I don't know if we're gonna do more DIY videos, but if you did enjoy it, please let me know down in those comments below. I certainly had fun doing this. I feel so proud and accomplished. I love this already. It looks fan-fucking-tastic. And uh, please smash that like button. Let me know if you built one of your own, how it turned out. Send me pictures on <laughs> social media or something and subscribe if you're new here. I do a lot of live streaming, a lot of vlogs, a lot of a little bit of everything. I'm a jack of all trades here on YouTube, as you can see, and I really hope you join the family. Guys, fam, beard heart. I know I said fam a lot today. It's just, it was just in my head. I love you. Bye-bye.